Over my nearly 20 years of hosting On the Water's angling adventures, I've been fortunate to have striped a fish throughout the entire Northeast, and one of the most common questions I get asked is, when is the best time to go for big bass? And if I had been asked 20 years ago, I would have said fall. But today, things have certainly changed. These days, there is just something about early June that has big bass on the move up and down our coast, enjoying the abundant bait fish and perfect water temperatures that arrive just before the start of summer. However, at this time of year, it can almost feel as if there's too many choices when it comes to deciding where to spend those precious days surrounding the June full moon when the biggest bass go on the feed. It was looking like our decision to fish the full moon on the Connecticut River wasn't gonna pay off. When a few days before our trip, my good friend Captain Jody Oreo called to say the fish weren't there and we may look at holding off till fall. But as big stripers often do, they surprised Joe and us by arriving seemingly overnight, leading to that Megan, get your bass down here phone call. Joe had found the bass schooling on a shallow flat in a featureless stretch of New England's longest river that may have been better suited for clamming in a neat low tide. But if Joe's experience had taught him anything, it was that stripers loved to stage during their spring migration, and we were about to ambush them on their journey. I'm gonna give you the soft plastic. Just your basic nine, yep. in, or nine inch GT. Now, not a lot of water in there, so we're not fishing it. It looks a little bit weedless, but you're not buried completely in there. Yeah. So pretty much all we're doing is casting it out, and then, Twitch, 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 twitch. Let it and then sit. let it die for a second, just like a half second. And they'll come right up and slam them. Now, if I see that dock get exploded on, I'll be changing over to the top water. But what Joe's doing, which is really smart right now, I'm gonna fish a little subsurface. He's gonna fish on the surface. See, we can't lock in if this bite is gonna be on the top or down below a little bit. We're not in a lot of water, so either way, if these fish are cruising through here, either one of these presentations will bring the fish to the surface. Yeah, I figure it's the best way to figure out you know, which one they're gonna bite, which one they're not gonna bite. And sometimes this high sun can really make a difference, you know, using a soft plastic. Because of the Connecticut River and the runoff and where it runs from, with some of the rain, you always get a little bit of color in here. It's a little bit tainted. It's not, it's yep. not gonna be that, clear, clear, clear water, which in a sense, sometimes I think mean, Joe helps the fishing because these fish aren't going to be as skittish. You can see right now we have bright blue skies and I think the only reason why we're able to catch these fish is because of this dark water that's, that's coming out. That's the stain in the water, which yep. is just allows these fish to kind of be subsurface and, and, and patrol without being seen from above. Believe it or not, this is actually a pretty good color for it. Usually it's a lot more chocolate milk. Oh, there we go, I missed it. I just saw the swirl. Now, Joe, do you let this sink? Uh, so I'll, I'll do a bunch of twitches, kind of reel it in fast, and then let it sit for just like basically a second, not too, too yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because they'll get a good look at it. Um, but a lot of times I'll just do continuous reeling until they come up and hit it. Oh, missed it. I'm gonna probably give you a dock. Look at oh, the swirl. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good fish. So I'm gonna come in and just clean up, clean Please up do. right behind you. Oh, that's a good fish. Come on. I just went through there. He wanted nothing to do with me. Oh, there we go. There he is. That's a big fish right there. So it's important when you set the hook, see how I have the rod down? That's what keeps his head in the water. If you get the head, if you put the rod up, it keeps his head out of the water and it can use more, um, it can thrash, thrash the water a lot more and have a tendency more to shake the hook. Not bad for the middle of the daytime. <laughs> so I think we've established a pattern early on that we're gonna go to a top water dock. <laughs> this is a good fish. Woo, yeah, a good look at the back on that fish, huh? Now you wanna grab the dock or you wanna, Joe, net or no net? There's no net on this boat. I didn't think so. <laughs> no net. No net on this boat. So if you can see how I'm keeping side pressure on them, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep that, that head straight. 
Because the second you go up on them, the, head's, the, the fish is going to flap around all over the place. But if you keep that thing low, it'll kind of keep their head in one spot. Biggest thing is just taking your time. There you go. It's <laughs> yeah. not a bad way to start the day. Joe, that's all of 30 pounds. Easily. Look at the stomach on these fish. They're eating healthy in here. A lot of bunker and a lot of these estuaries and out here in the in the main channel. Oh yeah. That's a nice big fish. Look right at there. the gut on that, Joe. Stud. I'm gonna take a quick shot too and we'll get this fish back yeah. in. That's probably 42, 43 inches, maybe bigger. Quick look. That's about 45. Wow. About 45 inches. This went. Sorry. It already started. When the schools of stripe is moving through the area and no clear structure to hold them, Joe and I worked opposite sides of the boat, working a large top water plug called the dock. The dock lure has a wide walk the dog action and makes a loud knocking sound that helps it get the attention of stripers, even in choppy or stained water. Oh, you see that? Yeah, he's right there. Work it slower and kind of keep it in that one spot. There you go. There he is. Keep the rod low. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's all right. It was a smaller fish. It wasn't a Jody Oriole first fish. <laughs> Did you see him come up though? That was, <laughs> that was awesome. awesome. So you just slow it down because the, the, right yeah, now with the trolling right motor got, being what it is, we're moving fast exactly, enough. Exactly, exactly. That's why the trolling motor is a game changer. It keeps you in that spot. Oh. Oh, he messed me up. This wind is helping us out big time oh, with this I'll tell bike. you what, it's, it's, it's easy to present it. Easier. Not only that, it's not as easier for them to tell it's, it's a tally. plug. Gets the fish fired up. It's like Albies. They, are, they hit better when the uh, water's chopped up than it is uh, yeah, when exactly. it's flat calm. Speaking of Albies, I can't wait. Oh, that's such a fun season, oh, isn't it? I tell you, I lost two jobs because of that, that fish. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> I lost my job at Chili's for about three weeks, and then they gave it back to me, and then I lost my first, first real job. I was doing hiring for like RNs and LPNs and stuff like that. Oh, that baby. We Keep hit it. it right on the surface. <laughs> I'll tell you what, one thing about fishing these docks, and I haven't thrown them this year, you got to get your cadence. Once you get your cadence down, it, it's, it just presents differently. Oh, doubled up, Chris. Doubled oh, up. it came oh. off. That was a real small one. And I'm coming over. Joe, not a big fish. Oh, you see the other one right yeah, behind right it? right behind it. I'm gonna go right over your shoulder and walk him right in. Bales flip, Joe. There you go. Yeah. I was just saying to Joe, one of the big things right now is getting your cadence down. Just started the dial in, it had a nice follow on the last one, hooked up, dropped it, just popped this guy. Let's get this guy back in the water, really green fish. Joe, like you said, no sea lights on any of these fish yet. No, they're all fish that been in here since probably, you know, late last year, late last year and it might never even left. Yeah. You know, they can, uh, the cool thing about this section is they can go stay in the river. Once they get out of the river, they go a couple miles east. They maybe go to the, to the race, Fisher's Island, and then they come right come back, back up in. here. In this. Now, do you think any of the Block Island fish ever cut through here or are they, that's a different group altogether? They could, they could, I, I mean, I know back in the day, you know, they used to come through, what is it, Hell's End or? Yeah, uh, Hell's Gate. Uh, Hell's Gate, yeah. And they come through Hell's Gate and they come this way. And last year, I think we had more of them, those fish. Um, this year, we'll see what happens. There we go. There you go, Joe. Oh, came off. What are we in right now? About Eight, nine feet? No. Three, three feet. Three point seven. <laughs> so these fish are just cruising the flats. Yep, that's it. So basically this is all mud over here. And what they're doing is with the high sun, they're coming out here and just sunbathing themselves pretty much. Three point six feet of water. <laughs> and so we're not even at dead low. Wow. When we're at dead low, this will be about two feet. 
All right, let's go take one off the... I might have landed on, on land up there. I might have just hit a sandbar. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> That's another really good fish. Ah, you got him. Well, oftentimes, Joe, you'll find these fish out there like this, and there'll be another one right behind them. Yes, yeah. There'll be they're one, two, them. three more right behind them. They're hoping that uh, they're going to spit out a bunker or some food out of their belly, so. That's another good one. You need a hand, Joe, or you got him? No, I got him. We're good. Not a bad one right there. Beautiful fish. Probably like 36, 37 yep. maybe. 37. Woo. There we go. Joe, putting on a clinic, brother. We both are. With the water temping in the low, lower 60s, mid 60s, and a little bit of that breeze, it sure feels nice. Oh, this feels great. Can't beat this. Here you go. I knew that this was gonna be a good week. And then uh, I got nervous because we were catching some fish, but they weren't like, they weren't following a pattern. Ooh, oh, right oh, out of the water. Oh, oh, oh. You got him, got That's him. a good one. Keep that rod low. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I keep forgetting that we're in three and a half feet of water. Yeah. He is way back there. Oh, oh whose fish is that? Oh, oh, oh. We may have to chase this fish down. But right now, that fish is out there in three feet of water. Yep. And there's no place for that fish to go but to cruise along the shallows. So by, like Joe said, by keeping that rod tip down, I'm keeping that fish's nose underwater. He has less chance of coming to the surface and throwing yep. it. And you know, you're using the, the mass of the water. You know, when he does those big head shakes, it's going to slow that head down dramatically. So, so walk him up. I'm going to walk him right up, Joe. All right. There you go. A lot of people would not imagine being out here in bright sunshine, yeah. middle of the day, early June, high pressure overhead, and we're crushing big fish in top water. I'm gonna put this girl right back in. We've got a gorgeous day out here, guys. We got. That breeze is sure helping it. I know it's in the mid 80s right now. You wouldn't know it. Oh, hey, Chris, guess what? Ba boom. <laughs> Another nice big fish. Same on the last one or bigger? I think it's bigger than the last one, but not as big. I don't know yet. <laughs> I have no clue. You haven't touched a drag though, right? No, no. I keep a looser drag with these because the trebles have a tendency to come out a little bit more. You know, they can't twist. They don't have the, the twisting thing in yeah, the middle. Right. And um, so they can use the bait as a fulcrum and wedge themselves off of it. Ooh, look at that fish. That one could be bigger than that first one. <laughs> so 
So yeah, if you notice, I have not pulled up on this rod. It keeps, keep it down near the water. They can't thrash around. It makes a huge difference. Especially when, like you said, you're in such th thin water. This yep. fish can't go down. Nope. It would be one thing if this fish could be down yes. 20 feet, you can stand that thing up. But with this fish having three and a half feet out there, there's only one place for it to go. Ooh, he just did a flyby. Oh my God. Whew. You see the size of this thing? Look at this thing, Chris. Look at the size of this thing. Oh my God. <laughs> this could be a- That's 40 a something. 40, 50 pounder almost. Oh my goodness. That's 50. Joe, um, I'm gonna- Watch your hand. Ready? Yeah, right in. <laughs> that That's is- That's 50 probably. How's that, boys? Oh, that? Joe, that is an absolute beast. I think that's 50. I think it is. I think that's bigger than the one we caught out of block. Jesus. We're pretty close. I just want to show you the folks at home the tail. Look at the size of that broom tail. That's a big <laughs> fish. There she goes. Joe, unbelievable. That's how it goes, man. Sweet hey. Jesus, that's Great awesome. job. Whew. All right. When the tide slacked down, the fishing slowed along with it giving us a chance to do a little exploring while skating the coves for schools of bunker we would flip on our next tide while alternating between live bait and the dock. And you're right here. With the live well full and the water starting to move again, Joe got us back into position just as some nice fish started to swirl on the surface. After just a few casts, the two of us picked up right where we had left off, proving once again by early June is one of the best times of the year to be a striper fisherman. So yeah, like I said, all we're doing here, going right through the nostril, out the other side, using a nice circle hook, get them and send them out there. That big splash right there? Calls him right in. I'm gonna Calls slide him back. Right this one's already rigged? No, nah, here, take this one. All right, all right. Thank you. Yep. So right now I'm in free spool, letting that fish swim. He'll start getting nervous. If he starts getting nervous, that means somebody's on his tush. The fact that he's got a pretty good sized pogey in there leads me to believe that. Anything that's gonna pick this guy up is probably gonna be a pretty good sized fish. I had two fish on at once the other day. On the dock? One on the dock, one on a bunker. Cool. That's another thing about these. I like really, really live bunker. And every time I get a new one or take one off, I throw it high up in the air so it makes that sound yeah, and call yeah. some more in. Thing. Look at the bite out of that guy. Seen better days, huh? Yeah. It's like I got bit bluefish. Now I'm being live line. <laughs> How can you get any worse? Well, just wait five minutes, buddy. There you go. That's one. Fast, fast, fast. Oh, he's on. There you go. Got some bunker eaters now, got baby. Got some bunker eaters, boys. Oh, he stayed down now. I'm happy we went and got those bunker. 
So we switched it up from earlier. We, we started the afternoon right after lunch. Topwater docks and Captain Diorio set the tone right out of the gate with some beautiful topwater stripers on the dock. We caught fish all afternoon and things as it slacked out, gave us an opportunity to slide into one of these harbors here, and pick up some bunker. And as soon as this water started moving again, these fish came in. Woo, better fish than I thought. Nice. Yeah, they, they fight a little different on uh, oh, this yeah. heavier gear. I got them for you, Chris. You got them? Yeah. That came right up. That's a beautiful fish there, buddy. That's, I'd say that's your biggest one That's the biggest one today. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Look at the gut on that fish. Nice one, buddy. Okay, he's got the bunker right here. Look at the gut on this thing. <laughs> there he goes. Nice job. Uh, I just threw this out and I had something big come up. Look at, Ooh, look, at look at this right here. There we go. Multitasking. <laughs> Joe, you work in a boat? <laughs> I don't think this is the same fish that was going after it, but this is a good one. I hit this fish right on its nose. He like literally waked on it right away. Not as big, but there was another, there was another bigger fish right behind it. Joe, you know what? You're having a good day when you're getting fish that are above the slot and you're like, yeah, it's okay. It's not bad. Beautiful fish. Beautiful. Clean fish. No sea lice on these fish. There he goes. Got to move it a little bit quicker now because yeah. we're moving into it versus going away. Oh, ho, 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 ho. There we go. There you go. Woo hoo! Soaked us. Oh, 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 oh. There he is. Chris, Perfectly hooked with the circle hook. There we go. 